Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this week's lecture on the false consensus effect. How do we think about uh, situations that are happening around us? Do we uh, actually think like others do or do others think the way we do, like the way we do? Now this, uh, there was a belief that most of the people think the way we do and so just to prove that all our intuitions are not correct. A group of psychologists in Stanford University experimented on students and tried to show that we often suffer from what is known as the false consensus effect. So most of us, uh, we have our information built up from countless previous experiences involving both ourselves and others and we believe that we must surely be having uh, very good insights. Generally, the difference between an intuitive psychologist and a professional psychologist is that intuitive psychologists are uh, generally they have no baseline data. They go by their interpretation of social responses as per how uh, they have learned through their experiences and accordingly these largely uh, depend upon subjective impressions and intuitions. On the other hand, the professional psychologist relies upon well-defined sampling techniques and statistical procedures for estimating the commonness of particular responses. So that is through a strict experimentation and observation, the professional psychologist comes to interpret something. And these estimates are relevant to subsequent interpretations and inferences and therefore he can proceed with the confidence in his data. So, uh, that actually defines how uh, or why professional psychology uh, depends on experimentation because most of the times that we the way we think it may not happen actually in the real uh, in the real situation it may not happen the same way. So, every social observer is actually an intuitive psychologist. So, we do not need to be psychologists per se, but you will often come across people saying that um, you know, I understand his psychology or I know how this individual thinks. He is doing it this way because of so and so or because of such and such. So, we have this interpretation of behavior and most of the time it is seen that in reality these have predictable biases and especially when we are estimating others behaviors and causes. And that uh, if you just go through the attribution theory by Kelly you will come to see it is a very interesting theory and these experiments later on especially the one on false consensus bias that we are going to talk about today was based on attribution theory by Kelly. And today we are going to discuss about the false consensus bias. So, uh, what happened was in 1970s uh, that is precisely in 1977 uh, Professor Lee Ross along with his associates tried to show how this false consensus effect operates. And uh, generally what is the false consensus effect? It is a phenomena of for which centralizes on people's tendency to project their ways of thinking onto other people, thinking that other people actually think the same way as they do. So, if I really wish to do something, I would also project this thinking on somebody else and say that well you know generally people behave this way and generally people would like to do things this way. So, it is actually my thought, my idea, my principles, my prejudgments that are uh, basing uh, my inferences about other people. So, this logical fallacy may actually involve a group of people or an individual. And as I said, it depends on the individual's own set of opinions, beliefs and impressions you know, and especially amongst the public. Mm. So, um, Professor Lee Ross uh, conducted a research on 
biases in human inference, judgment and decision making, especially on the cognitive, perceptual and motivational biases that lead people to misinterpret each other's behavior and that create particular barriers to dispute resolution and the implementation of peace agreements. So, he primarily conducted two studies, actually they are four studies, but um, uh, you, you can actually uh, sum it up as two, but we are going to discuss the four major studies and show how the false consensus effect works. And mind you, we are going to do it through proper experimentation. So, that is what Professor Ross did. So, he showed through experiments, through different studies on the Stanford undergraduate students, mind you they are undergraduate college going students who are uh, supposed to be educated and unbiased. So, not generalizing about people's uh, um, uh, not uh, trying to consciously project their opinion to other people. So, what the first study actually involved was a, a total of 320 Stanford undergraduates and they were um, here Professor Ross gave uh, four stories or four situations and uh, so out of the 320 they were divided into groups of 80 each and they were each given a story and where the sto readers were asked to place themselves in a particular setting in which a series of events culminated in a clear behavioral choice. So, after reading the story they were asked to, uh, they, requ they were required to give a judgment as to the questions asked. So, um, the first story was a supermarket story. So, I will just read the story to you. So, it is as you are leaving your neighborhood supermarket, a man in a business suit asks you whether you like shopping in that store. So, you reply quite honestly that you do like shopping there and indicate that in addition to being close to your home, the supermarket seems to have very good meats and produce at reasonably low prices. The man then reveals that a videotape crew has filmed your comments and asks you to sign a release allowing them to use the unedited film for a TV commercial that the supermarket chain is preparing. So, the questions asked to the 80 students who took this, who uh, read this story was, what percent of your peers do you estimate would sign the release and what percent would refuse to sign it? So, the total sum had to be 100 percent. The next story was that of a term paper. So, here the term paper story went like this, you arrive for the first day of your class in a course in your major area of study. The professor says that the grade in your course will depend on a paper due the final day of the course. He gives the class the option of two alternatives upon which they must vote. They can either do papers individually in the normal way or they can work in teams of three persons who will submit a single paper between them. You are informed that he will still give out the same number of A's, B's and C's etcetera, but that in the first case every student will be graded individually, while in the second case all three students who work together get the same grade. So, they are actually going to work in groups. So, the, again the questions that were asked to these, uh, this group of 80 students was, what percent of your peers do you estimate would vote for the group papers and what percent would vote for individual papers. So, the third story was about a traffic ticket story. So, while driving through a rural area near your home, you are stopped by a country police, county police officer who informs you that you have been clocked at 38 miles per hour in a 25 miles per hour zone. So, that you have been clocked for speeding. You believe this information to be accurate. After the policeman leaves, you inspect the citation and find that the details in the summons regarding weather, visibility, time and location of violation are highly inaccurate. The citation informs you that you may either pay a 20 dollar fine by mail without appearing in court or you must appear in municipal court within the next two weeks to contest the charge. And the questions asked to this group of 80 students was, what percent of your peers do you estimate would pay the 20 dollar fine by mail and what percent would go to court to contest the charge. So, uh, and the final story, so of the fourth group who got was a space program referendum story and it was uh, the story goes like this, that it is proposed in congress that the space program be revived and that large sums be allocated for the manned and unmanned exploration of the moon and planets near earth. 
So, supporters of the proposal argue that it will provide jobs per technology and promote national pride and unity. Opponents argue that the space program will either necessitate higher taxes or else drain money from important domestic priorities. Furthermore, they deny that it will accomplish the desirable effects claimed by the program supporters. Both sides, of course, refute each other's claims, and ultimately, a public referendum is held. So, the questions asked was: What percent of your peers do you estimate would vote for the proposal allocation of funds for space exploration, and what percent would vote against it? So, mind you, all these these four situations or these four stories are given to groups of eighty students each, and these are all undergraduate Stanford students. So, what would happen? So after this, they were asked to complete a questionnaire, and uh, on one page, they were first asked to indicate two behavioral options they personally would choose. So what is what they would choose, and they were asked to uh, give a personality assessment test. And after this was another um, two page on the participant, uh, where the where the participant was required to rate uh, the typical person. Who would means that is the other person? How would the others rate this? So he was supposed to rate the characteristics or the personality traits of the other person. So before this, when uh, that is the peers. So that there were two questions asked. So who, who wh what number number of peers would agree to it, and others would disagree to it. So here. Uh, the in the questionnaire, one part of it actually involved the individual answering what he would prefer to do, and the other would be where the characteristics and also the personality traits of the individual, and the other would be the characteristics and personality traits that he would attribute to uh, the peer. So, say this example is subject who is reading the supermarket story was required on one page to rate the traits of the typical person. Who would sign the commercial release, and the typical uh, person who would not sign the commercial release. So, the what would be the characteristic traits? And uh, so these are the results. So it was seen that um, in seventy, uh, they felt for the supermarket story, fifty-three percent would sign the release, and twenty-seven percent would not sign the release. For the term paper, sixty-four percent would sign. So, the, so what would uh, be the the question was that how many would vote for group papers? So here uh, they feel that um, the sixteen percent would uh, opt for the group paper, and sixty four percent would opt for the individual paper. For the speeding fine, thirty seven percent would pay the fine, and forty three percent would contest. And for the space program. So, um, vote for cutback would be thirty-two percent, and against cutback would be forty-eight percent. And it was seen that option one was chosen by one eighty-six people. So, on the other hand, uh, for option two, in all the four stories, one thirty-four people. So that's forty-two percent actually chose the second option. Now, sorry, the others would all be in numbers. Only the last one I have mentioned in percentage. So, uh, what what do these results actually show? The results show that there is a perception of consensus. And what is a perception of consensus? That is, most of the subjects thought that other people would do the same as them, regardless of which of the two responses they actually chose themselves. So this validates the phenomena of the false consensus effect, because in reality, people don't naturally or uh, always believe or be behave the way that we do. Another observation that emerged from this study was that when participants were asked to describe the attributes of the people who will likely make the choices opposite their own, these subjects were made. Uh, the, the subjects made extreme predictions about these people, so the personalities had to be very different from their own. So that's how they attributed them. That individuals generally we do this. Uh, you know, you can try this study with some of your friends and colleagues also. So you will see that most of the times what happens is we feel that individuals who are like us will think like we do. 
and individuals who are very different from us will probably behave in a different way. So this was, uh, this was what came out of the results. Now, again, another study of a similar type was uh, done to actually uh, check out the domain of the false consensus effect. And in this, uh, it was designed to explore a more general tendency for subjects to overestimate the extent to which others share their habits, preferences, fears, daily activities, expectations and other personal characteristics. So, here the second study planned to see to what extent do we think that people share our characteristics. So, here again 80 Stanford undergraduates completed a questionnaire dealing with 35 personal description items. And each item presented a pair of mutually exclusive and exhaustive categories. And uh, here the hypothesis of the study was subjects who place themselves in a given personal description category would estimate the percentage of college students in general in that category to be greater than would subjects who place them in the alternative category. So, in whichever they, uh, whichever traits we attribute ourselves with, we believe so th that that most of the people, most of the college students in this case, because it was uh, done on college students, that most of the college students in general would belong to that category. So, here we are talking of personality traits. In the previous study, we are actually talking about the decisions that would, that an individual would take during a situation. So, Ross and his colleagues, they uh, inferred that uh, we look at uh, situations in a particular way because we and we interpret that others will also look at a situation in a particular way because we feel that the others also share similar attributes, similar characteristics like we do. So, in this study they were actually trying to see how many uh, people we think would share our type of characteristics, the similar characteristics. And this is just a sample that I have taken from Ross's 1977 paper on Journal of Experimental and Social Psychology. And you will see that these have personal traits and views, personal preferences, characteristics, problems and so on. And the results show that the participants who place themselves in a given descriptive category consistently estimated the percentage of college students in general in that category to be greater than did subjects who place themselves in the alternative category. So, the hypothesis was actually proved true. The false consensus effects applies to many types of personal behaviors and feelings and opinions and characteristics, although there is some ambiguity about the specific domain and the limits of the phenomena. So, there should be further studies on this and if you just look up Ross et al study, you will see that thereafter, you know, there have been several studies that were done on the false consensus effect. And study 3 and study 4 are very interesting. So, study 3, so, so far we have seen uh, Ross tried to see how people would behave, uh, think others would behave in a situation. And then uh, there was this uh, the personality uh, attributes that we would uh, give to uh, another person, that we would attribute to another person. Third was that it was going to be uh, more of an action based thing. So, in the third study, 104 standard, uh, Stanford undergraduates were asked if they would be willing to walk around their campus for 30 minutes wearing a sandwich board saying eat at Joe's. Now, for motivation students were told, the participants were told that this was, uh, they would learn something useful for the study and this would really help in the scientific ex uh, um, you know, experimentation. And um, they were absolutely free to refuse if they wished to. So, here, so where, now this required an action and here the students were asked what percentage of peer, peers do you estimate would agree to carry the sandwich board around campus and what percentage would refuse to do it. So, what do you think would happen? So, the results were similar as the previous study. So, what did that show? that um, of those who agreed to wear the sandwich board, of them 62 percent thought the others would also agree. And those who refused, on, they thought that only 33 
percent would agree to wear the sandwich board. So, people would they so this again confirms that we think that people will actually go by uh, the way we are thinking or rather if we put it this way that people also think the way we do. And um, uh, the people who agreed to carry the sandwich board might have said what is wrong with someone who refuses I think they must be really scared of looking like a fool. While the people who refuse could have said that who are the show offs who agreed to carry the sandwich board. So, uh, this again, so this was the third study where it was more action based and it was an estimation of how many people if you are willing to take an action how many people would also be willing according to your opinion to take that action. The fourth study was where Ross and his colleagues actually in increased or uh, 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 introduced a conflict mechanism. This is very interesting here actually the action has to be done. So, 80 Stanford undergraduates again participated in groups of 2 to 5 subjects and these subjects had volunteered to take part in an experiment concerned with communication techniques. So, upon arriving the subjects were asked to complete a single page of their likes and dislikes questionnaire and then they were asked of some things that they like to do and some things that they dislike doing. Now, then they were asked whether they would be willing to carry sandwich boats and walk around campus. So, it is a con, um, continuation of the previous study, but different subjects were taken and that. Uh, so, here uh, they were asked that whether they would be uh, they would be willing to carry the um, sandwich boats across campus to see whether uh, the messages uh, you know direct messages were really helpful. So, whether individuals responded to personal messages because this was a study on communication technique. So, um, the conflict was created by uh, the subjects being asked to indicate their personal willingness to carry the board as per uh, referring to their likes and dislikes that they had mentioned in the questionnaire. So, if a person has mentioned that I really like interacting with people or I really like um, to do some do a task actively, then uh, the conflict created was you have written uh, something in your questionnaire uh, and later would you really like to carry on this act of uh, taking a sandwich board around. So, if a person really did not wish to take it uh, around campus take the sandwich board around campus then that would be uh, he would be in a conflicting situations to to what he had written um, in the questionnaire. So, once the subject had made his own decision, then he was asked to make consensus estimates concerning the choice and to rate the one of one person tra rate the traits of one person who agreed and who refused to wear the sign. So, again in this case an, um, uh, again a step towards an action. So, whether the individual would carry on, a act on an action as per his uh, a personal attributes. So, I have decided that I have I have stated that this is my personality attribute I like doing this, but uh, here I am uh, not really keen to carry on that action. So, a conflict is created and then um, the, they were asked to uh, see that uh, identify or explore the tra uh, traits of the individual who would agree to carry and who would refuse to carry the sign. So, again the results showed that there was a perception of consensus. So, overall the false consensus effect was strikingly apparent both for the subjects who faced the hypothetical decision in study 3 and those who faced the authentic conflict situation created in study 4. So, here uh, in both the situations there was a false consensus effect. So, subjects whose hypothetical or real decision was to acquiesce to the experimenter's request to wear the sign thought that this was relatively common. So, those who agreed to wear the sign thought that this was relatively common and subjects who refused to wear the sign thought that you know accepting this was pretty uncommon. So, again people are going by their own choice. So, what do these experiments or what do these studies on false consensus effect tell us? this shows that people have the tendency to judge 
how people make decisions based on how they would make their own decisions. And if other people do decide to do otherwise, they view them as someone defective and unacceptable. So, this is probably where you know the idea or the concept of us and them starts. So, anybody who is not um, behaving the way I am doing does not belong to my group. So, we people or our people think in a particular way, those people or them they think in a different way. And that is how probably the first uh, streaks of prejudice develop. And um, you know these uh, ideas of uh, groupisms uh, come into being. So, uh, generally uh, so social psychologies other experiments also show that you know especially individual studies they show that uh, you know when we are uh, attributing positive qualities it is to ourselves. And people whom we like, whom we prefer, we attribute positive qualities to them, because we consider them as that is a we group. So, they belong to our group. And people uh, who are uh, behaving differently, they definitely have, uh, they are seen to have all negative qualities, qualities that we do not attribute ourselves with. So, this uh, I thought that this was, would be an in interesting study to discuss with you. And uh, you could probably, when we are talking of psychology and experimentation, you could probably try out uh, this thing for yourself with your friends and colleagues and see whether the false consensus effect actually works. So, you can create a situation of your own write a story um, and then you have these questions and you can give it to people. And also along with you can see that um, how would they, so they, there would be two questions. So, okay, it could be that how would the others, how many people would agree to this, how many people would disagree and uh, what would you have done. So, you could carry, you could conduct your own experiment to see whether the false consensus effect works. So, that brings us to the idea or to, to the inference that we are actually very poor intuitive psychologists. And it uh, this we generally when we are when somebody is saying that I could have told you that or this was obvious or my, in my experience that is not true. So, most of the times when we are talking about psychology we talk like this. Now, uh, this is what uh, differentiates talking about psychology and actually uh, practicing psychology as a scientific subject. And uh, this shows that we uh, you know to come to infer about human um, attitude, human behavior, you need to do that through an experimental setting rather than um, basing it on personal opinion and judgments. So, to conclude, we can say that people are more likely to assume someone who does not hold the same views as them having a different personality than their own. And this is because people think to themselves whether consciously on or unconsciously that surely all right thinking or normal people, normal thinking people think the same way as me, because I consider myself as a normal healthy intelligent individual. So, I am sure others are also thinking like me. Well, apparently not and although knowing that we do not know other people. So, that would be a great start to understanding psychology and that is why we need psychology studies. Thank you.